Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Salt Air, where we get granular on salt. I'm your host, Janae Andrus, and community manager of the Salt Project. So if you don't want to miss any Salt Air episodes, go ahead and click the subscribe button below so that you can talk to us every single week. And by us, I mean me and Tom Hatch, the creator of Salt. What's up, Tom? Hey. <laughs> You're so enthusiastic. I think like yeah. three people clicked the subscribe button just now. So <laughs> smile. <laughs> All right. So today we actually really want to get into salt states. Okay. So one of the big things that salt is known for is its configuration management. And using configuration management, getting started with it instead of salt is really easy to do. But it exists as a function inside of salt's larger functional ecosystem. And so I'm going to hop over to another screen here. Going to push ye oldie screen share button. And I've got a minion and a master set up here. So I can uh, ping my uh, minion from my master. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a salt state. Salt states are made with the hope that they're really, really easy for people to get started with. And they're inside of these uh, SLS files. And, Which uh, the, I think is really great. I just see this consistently whenever we talk about salt because salt is designed to make things easier. And I like that it's easy to get into something that is supposed to make things easier. I just, I love how that always comes up when you talk about salt. Well, and the thing is, is that salt isn't just designed to be easy to start with. It's designed to be easy to use. And this is one of the big compliments that we get on a very, very regular basis, that they may say that they feel that some other tool is easier to start with, but everyone who gives it uh, a good solid workout always comes back and says that it was much easier to continue using salt and continue working inside of salt than it was with any other tool, even if they felt that other tool was easier. And so it's not something that's just a, a gimmick to get you in the door. It's meant to be smooth all the way through. Okay, so salt states are stored in what we call SLS files um, or structured layered state files, which is uh, only a recently... Uh, uh, a recent change to what SLS means. Really? What was it before? Salt, salt state. <laughs> but now it's structured layers, salt files. So it. Structured layered state. State. And that's because I've started using the SLS format in other applications. Okay. And so what we're looking at here is that we've got a state that's going to install and start um, what I'm going to own up to be my favorite web server, maybe because I'm old. Apache? Yeah, I love the Apache web server. Extremely well-written, and especially as of 2.4, really, really fast. And so if we want to just install the Apache web server, we have what we call the ID up here for our configuration stanza. All of this is just inside of a YAML file, so it looks really straightforward. And then we say we're going to run the package package.install, which just says we're going to make sure that this package is installed. And then service.running, which means we're going to make sure that the service, the Apache service, is running. Salt is item potent in its execution. And so even if Apache was already installed and running, it would, it would uh, just make sure that the end state is always consistent. state.apply, and then something will go wrong because it always does in these demos. And <laughs> That's so the nature we, of a demo, right? It is the nature of a demo, but it worked. Yay. Okay. And so what happened is that we went out and it said, yep, Apache is already installed on this system, so it didn't need to do anything. And the service wasn't running. And so the service was started. And we know that it took 124 milliseconds to run that service. And the change was that the HTTPD service was started. So similarly, I could, let's, let's say that uh, I'm going to mess up this system. 
So I'll do a system CTL stop HTTPD. And so now I've killed the Apache service and I'll, um, uh, I will aggressively remove the Apache web server from my system here. And, and I so, believe it's key to do it aggressively or it just doesn't work. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So every, anybody who knows Pac-Man knows that that's aggressive removal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I can run it again and uh, we'll see what's different. The first time we ran, it said Apache's already installed. The act of uh, checking to see if Apache installed took 73 milliseconds and no changes were made. Wow, Four 73 milliseconds. milliseconds impressive we've we've actually gone through a lot of effort to make all operations in fa uh, in salt very very fast and we take great pride in uh, being a very high performing piece of software it is one of my favorite things to look at is the duration always well since i went and made sure that it was uninstalled and whatnot we can see that now this took a little longer right 4.3 seconds to actually, uh, because I actually had to go and download Apache and install Apache. We can see that we get a complete change log of every package that was installed on this system. And even one of them that just happened to have gotten updated in the process. So we are able to get a complete log of exactly what changed because we want complete visibility into what's going on on our systems and that the service was started. And then we get a summary that we're able to see that the entire operation took 4.5 seconds. Nice. And then everything is nice and in place. There's one more thing that I want to bring up that happened in here, kind of behind the scenes. Inside of this uh, state file, what we're looking at is that we're saying, we're gonna make sure that this package is installed and this service is running. And that the name of the service is HTTPD, and the name of the package is Apache. That by itself is enough for this to run successfully because Salt is going to run everything top down. So it'll run everything in the order which is defined inside of the YAML file. But we also have the ability to have um, broader declarative hooks. This is something that makes Salt not only unique, but also I would argue much more powerful and useful. It runs in the order in which things are defined, which makes it easy and intuitive, but it also gives us very powerful declarative tools. And so that's where this comes in, this require statement. This require statement says, look, instead of trying to just make HTTPD the service run, I'm only going to try and do this if the Apache package has been successfully installed. Okay. And I'm only going to do it, and, and I'm going to change the order to say this is only going to happen after the package has been installed. Oh. And so what this does is it allows us to give to have much more powerful management of the flow of execution when we've got lots of SLS files that we're dealing with, or we're dealing with something that's more complicated. And having those sorts of hooks is one of the reasons why salt stays easy as it continues to grow as a tool that you get to use. All right? I'm done. That's awesome. And I love that. And that's consistently what we talk about is how salt makes things easier, right? That's really the whole, the whole point of salt. Would you, you created it. You tell me, is that the whole point of salt? Make everything well, a little that, easier? That was definitely one of the primary goals was to make things easier. I'd used the other config tools out there, and I felt that uh, while some of them were very difficult to get started with and some were easier to get started with, that they were all difficult to continue to use. Scaling software is not just about scaling it to lots of systems. It's about scaling it to the usability of people. That's significant. Okay. That's huge. When so you're scaling it. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you so much for walking us through that. It was wonderful. We love getting granular on salt. Thank everyone. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want any salt project fixes between now and the next time we drop a new episode, feel free to go to saltproject.io anytime 
we are there. Join us on Slack. Join us online. Um, we'd love to talk to you. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, Janae Andrus, your host, and happy to have talked with you. Thanks, Tom, for talking to us again about salt. And we'll catch you guys next time.